Hi you guys, in today's video tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how to make one of these adorable and very practical bowl cozies. Uh, you use these whenever you're making soup and the bowl gets hot and you use it to prevent yourself from getting burned by the bowl. Um, these are gonna be fully microwavable, washable, even, even reversible. The fabric that I'm gonna be using today is actually a flannel and wool blend. I thought that that would be a appropriate choice for something cozy, you know, you want it to feel good on your hand. Um, and also slightly insulating, so it might keep your hot food hotter longer. Uh, this specific collection is from Henry Glass. It's called the Be Humble Collection. And I love it because it has all the solids that you just saw. And then also these sort of like subtle prints, right? We've got hound's tooth, we've got herringbone, um, and I can't remember the name of this last plaid, but a bunch of different plaids um, that you can combine with these solids above. The colors are very appropriate for fall and winter. Just thought it was like the perfect match for a handmade bowl cozy. So let's get into the tutorial, starting with the materials that you need. You are going to start by cutting out 10 by 10 squares of a inner fabric and outer fabric, and then also make bias binding. Um, that's an optional choice, but that's what this tutorial is going to cover today. Of course, you can use the turning method, but you need two 10 by 10 squares of fabric and then also a nine by nine square of some kind of fleece interfacing. You can use the like heat protectant stuff, but you will not be able to microwave it. Um, and I like to just go ahead and have my cozy on my bowl, throw it in the microwave and take it out. Um, so I just use fusible fleece. All right, so we have our 10 by 10 squares. I am using a pattern for the outside and a solid for the inside of the bowl. And then I went ahead and cut out a nine by nine square of the heat and bond fusible fleece. This stuff is a little bit thicker and harder than what you might be used to from some other brands, which makes it perfect for this project because you really want the bowl to kind of like stand up on itself. And the other thing that I love specifically about the heat and bond brand is that you don't need to use steam when you're adhering the fleece to your fabric. Um, which is great because that means that the, the fabric doesn't shrink and neither does the interfacing itself. So go ahead and adhere your fusible fleece to the, the, like the lining, I guess, of your bowl koozie. And then we are going to make a few markings here. We need to fold the either one. You can start with either one, fold it in half one way take a ruler and a marking tool and from like the fold is over here and the raw edges are over here you are going to make a line basically we're making darts so you're going to go one inch in from the fold and two inches down like this and this is going to be your little pleat for your bowl and then you're going to repeat on this side we're going to go two inches into the long edge right here and then one inch out toward the short edge and that is going to be our marking can you see that same thing on this side one inch toward the short end two inches toward the long end boom like that then open this out fold it the other way And again, one inch toward the short edge, two inches toward the long edge. Like so, and then when you open this out, it's gonna look a little cray, but you can see these are gonna be your little Vs that you are gonna make into this fabric. You're gonna do the exact same process for this, uh, for your lining piece, folding it in half and making all of those markings opening it out and doing it for the other side as well. Okay, machine set up for this project. I have just regular polyester thread. I have a size 90 universal needle 
and I'm going to be sewing it at straight stitch, half inch seam allowances, maybe even like a scant half inch. Um, you don't have to be super pre precise there. Just make sure that it's equal all the way around. Um, but for these darts, which is our first step in sewing, we just make the folds that we originally did making sure that, you know, everything is as even as possible. You can tell I'm not being super precious about this. It's not like if it's off by a millimeter or so, anyone will ever notice. But you're gonna go and start at the raw edge, drop your needle, backstitch, come down to the tip of your point, of your dart, and at this point, the correct way is to sew off the edge and leave a long tail and then tie it off with knots. But again, because this is kind of like a crafty project and not necessarily trying to fit a body, we're just going to do the cheater version and backstitch. But if you absolutely have to follow the rules, feel free to do the tie off method. And you're just going to repeat that seven more times <laughs> on all the other edges of your, or all the other darts of your um, cozy. And when you're done doing all four, you get like, you know, something that looks kind of like a fabric bowl, <laughs> like that. We are going to trim away um, to about a quarter of an inch um, on all four of these darts as well. But go ahead and do your fleece version. Once you have all of your darts sewn, you're going to take each fabric bowl that you have. You're going to place the inside of the bowl, wrong sides together with the outer portion of the bowl, matching up all raw edges, all corners, and all dart legs. So basting stitch is just the longest stitch that you have on your machine. Still a straight stitch, and we're still going to honor that half inch seam allowance. So we're going to do it just shy of half an inch maybe three eighths, you can even do a quarter and that would be fine as well. And you start on one corner and go all the way around. When you get to a corner, you're gonna stop, leave your needle down, lift the presser foot and rotate. I'm a little bit shy of my seam allowance. Let's go one more stitch, yep. Then you come down, making sure your raw edges stay even during that pivoting process. And you come down the other side. Okay, now technically you have a finished bowl, right? Like this is going to work. If you ever went to wash this or anything like that, you might have some, you know, threads that come off. Um, it would create like a fringe, <laughs> which honestly could be kind of cool too. <laughs> but we are going to finish ours with that bias binding that I made. If you've never made bias binding before, just know you can buy it pre-made. Um, it's over like where the thread is, um, but it's nice to be able to make it out of the exact same type of fabric. Um, and also you just get more options in terms of how you want it to look. Like the uh, bindings at the stores are gonna be pretty much all solid colors. Um, so I just like to make my own and that bias tape maker really does make really quick work of it. Okay, so because it's double fold bias tape, it's folded twice, right? You got a fold here and then a fold in the center. So we're gonna start with one end and I'm gonna start somewhere in the middle here like this. I'm gonna lay this down, put a pin in, I don't know, about an inch away from the edge and then this gets turned under. That way when we come back around, the idea is to fold this back over the other side. This will be a nice clean finish. So I'm just gonna go down all these edges. When you get to the corners, you I'll show you what to do. All right, so as you're coming down to your corner, you stitch all the way to your half inch seam allowance. 
backstitch, just a few stitches, pull it out of your machine, and then you're gonna come to the corner and this piece gets rotated 90 degrees. So again, you have your little like longer piece of bias or binding and you just rotate it around 90 degrees. You're gonna have a fold at the top and your raw edges are still gonna match, okay? So this is what it looks like. One more time, turn 90 degrees, fold at the top, raw edges meet up, okay? And then you put it in the machine, again, half an inch away from the edge, backstitch, and then you're gonna, this is the last little piece for me. I'm gonna stitch over where I started by about half an inch, or more, it doesn't really matter. Backstitch again. Okay, and if you have a tail of binding still, just cut that away. And you can see, because we folded over this little itty bitty edge in the beginning, when we finish this off, this is the little view that you are going to get, nice and pretty. So next, we have to trim away some of this seam allowance just to make room for our binding to fold over. So come to your corner and we're just um, trimming away maybe an eighth, somewhere between an eighth and a quarter. Try not to overthink it, just a little bit. And when you're coming over to these corners, just make sure you keep the folded edge out of the way. Okay, so now we can fold up our binding and press along that center fold. And that little center fold is gonna be right at the edge of our project. And then we can stitch in the ditch and it will catch this underneath. You can do this by hand feel free to do it by hand, but you can also do it on a machine pretty easily. So, get it going, and I'll show you what it looks like. You can also use a bunch of pins here or clips if you want, but this fabric is so kind of like sticky to itself, it'll probably be okay. When you come to your corner, you are gonna have like a little baby pleat. You are gonna have this coming up one end, then the other end gets folded over and that's what the underside of your corner will look like. So one will have like a 45 degree angle and the other should match up with your folded edge. So just again, needle down, press your foot up, rotate and come back down stitching in the ditch again. Okay, and when you come to the ends, just make sure that you fold both of them over the edge, keeping that little baby fold, little, I guess, hem in place, like so. Again, feel free to use pins. When you get back to where you started, just stitch over those original stitches a little bit and backstitch. All right, and with a little bit of thread trimming and all of that, you have your really cute bowl cozy with bias binding, which I just think is such a nice, I don't know, nice little finish. Obviously, it's a little bit more work, but that's what we're here to do, push ourselves a little bit, learn something new every time. Um, so if you've never done this kind of technique before, give it a go, see what you think. And then go ahead and start cranking out millions of these. Um, I use them all the time, so you're gonna need more than one for sure. I cannot wait to see how all of your bowl cozies turn out. Please be sure to um, leave any questions that you have about this tutorial in the comment section below. I can answer them there for you. And if you do make a bowl cozy, tag me on social media at inside the hem. But that's going to do it for me today, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all very soon. Happy bowl cozy making. Bye.